Hello, everyone. <laughs> Welcome to the first of two Q&As ahead of game week 30. We're seven minutes late and I take none of the blame, Sam Bonfield. It's all your fault. <laughs> well, I've been at Max's school because he had a performance this afternoon. So I went to watch that. Then I realised I hadn't had any lunch. So I've been trying to eat some lunch, which I've, I'm still... I've still got excuses, here. Excuses, excuses. Then I realised I hadn't posted a link. Then you hadn't sent a link. Oh. <laughs> I did set up late, um, but I, in my mind, I sent you the links and you joined instantly. And you were because well, that, that's what around. normally. To be fair, that's what normally happens. Normally, yes. I'm sitting at my desk, chomping at the bit, waiting for you mm. to send me a link. Now you're chomping to, on your lunch. Today, I was still kind of and and I was sort of faffing because I got in late from school and then I was like, oh, I need a tea. I can't stream without a tea, so. Did that, and then I was like, oh, I'm hungry. Why am I so hungry? Oh, because I didn't have any lunch. Mm, mm. So here we are. And as, as literally as the screen wiped back, I was still finishing putting my lipstick on. Yeah, I know. It's it literally, we're, we're, it could have been a lot later. So just know that, because Sam was not not prepared for this. James C, where's the host at? Exactly. It's like, we're here now. Yeah, where the girl's at, but it's like, where does the host at? Yeah. <laughs> I need to stop trying I haven't to even sound. tidied up my room. Look, normally yeah. I like tidy all this stuff up. Like, there's a bottle of perfume there. My lip gloss is there. Oh, like, there's absolute carnage in your I ass. I know. I do feel like you show more of my set in this. <laughs> than mm. normal. One day know. I'll just get, like, the whole background just being, like, your background. Because quite a few people ask me as well, like, what's on my on my bookshelf yeah. and stuff. Um, Turn my little light on Books, it. mostly. Oh, oh. Whoa, look at that. That's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. I don't so know why I'm all... behaving like this. I've clearly gone mental. <laughs> we, we've lost it. I mean, it's the first Q and A in the ancestral break. I haven't done any. I haven't even thought about FPL uh, for a week. So Have you not? not really. No, I haven't even played. I was going to play the wild card chip. Haven't even pressed the button. Very Have you disappointing. Not? Have you? Have you pressed it? Yeah. Oh, nice. Pressed mine on Saturday while Spurs were still playing. I was that raging. Okay, well, I was going to do it and then I chickened out and now I'm like 0. 0.6 down in value. <laughs> so <laughs> it's uh, it's going well. Delia says, great hair day, Sam. And Yelena says, your hair looks lovely. Um, oh, well. guys, my nice. hair, um, I have had it done this week. You, you might, I don't Very know if nice. you can see from here. It's slightly pink. I had some more pink put in it this slightly time. Slightly pink? Okay. Yeah, I've been having it put pink put through it for a while. Okay. But I'm getting blonder and blonder. So this week You're gonna I was like... You're going to go like Rapino? Rap Rapino? Rapino? No, she had pink hair for a bit, didn't she? Yeah, she did, but no, that, and that's not the plan. But no. my, I, I, I'm getting so old as, and my hair's getting so grey that I was like, I've got to do something about it because the dark hair and the grey just are not not the mm. one. So we're going blonder and blonder. So this time it's the blondest it's been in maybe ever. And mm. well, every time I have a few bits of pink put through it, just because it makes me feel young. Yeah, well, that's, that's all you need. You're, yeah. you're as young as you feel. I mean, and I if thought... the girls are liking my hair, then you know. Cameron Star says, as you look FF. What's FF? Is that good? Freaking fit. <laughs> I, my, I had a, I had a, I had oh, a thanks, swear Cameron. word. It wasn't an insult. It doesn't you mean you always look great. Look great. You I'll, always look great. Oh, stop it. You won't like this one, though, Sam, from Togo Pat. As you can catch, Sam, half that ranking week. So I'm coming for you. Red Arrow on a free hit, Sam. It's not good, is it? I nearly scored them. <laughs> 15 points, was it? Do you know, do, 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 oh do you, would you like to hear my, my funny Can't tale of woe? 24 points like me. Oh, I'm just saying. Would you like to hear my, Max got 26, my Max. 26. Do you want to hear, hear my tale of woe? I'd love to. That's why we're here. Okay, here we go. So, my team was set all week. I okay, so change... I get some like tiny violins playing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, get some tiny violins. <laughs> get the orchestra. I need a whole orchestra, actually. Not just a tiny <laughs> violin, I need a whole orchestra. So, I, I made no changes to my free hit team all week. I was happy mm. with it. I left it. It was fine. And then on Saturday morning, this is the trouble with a later deadline. I blame the late deadline. On Saturday morning, I get up, I take Evie. So our gym does these art classes on a Saturday morning. She loves it. So down we go to the art class and I'm sitting in the lounge, quite happily having a cup of tea. And then Spurs tweet their graphic for match day. And it's got Timo Werner on it. And in that moment, my whole world fell apart because I was like, why is Werner on the graphic? They only ever put the players that are starting on the graphic. Why is Werner on the graphic? I've got Brennan Johnson. And in that moment, the, my life, my FPL life, <laughs> my just, life. Just, just just went mental. So I just... But I, is I the went, match day graphic ever represented who's playing? Does normally with Spurs. Normally it's does it? normally okay. the starter. So okay. I normally pay quite a bit of attention to the match okay. day graphic. Mm. So when Werner's on it, and as and not just as one of the little players, as the lead player, I'm like, oh my God. Mm. Can't have Brennan Johnson. 
Well, Johnson so, didn't do anything, so, so how that, bad so, this can, no, no, how uh, bad could this no, get? It gets worse. Okay. So, I, so I decide, okay, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get rid of Johnson, and instead, I'll get Morgan Gibbs White. So I do good, this. Yeah, good. Right? Wow, that's, good. that's really that's great. Yeah, yeah, good. You'd think, right? So then I think, okay, well, I don't want to go in without three spurs, so I'll get Pedro Porro. Sure. Fine. So I get Pedro Porro. And then I think, okay, rather than playing Gibbs White, I'll play Manise against Spurs. So at wow, this, point, this is going great. This is growing great. Whoa. Right? So I leave, I pick up Evie, we leave the gym, I'm happy. I'm and Munez is in the starting lineup. Munez is in the starting level. Oh. And I'm thinking, this is great. This is great. Then we go, we go to Watford shopping. So we go, get into the shops, quite happy, walking around. Max says, can I look at my team? I'm like, yeah, he's looking at his team. He's got Morgan Gibbs White in the starting 11. He's happy. We're all happy. He's playing Muniz. Fine. Then I stupidly did something I never do. Because you know I don't like Twitter. Mm. I don't go on Twitter. Don't like it. Mm. For some reason, I decided to check whether Alanga was starting. Mm. And in that moment, I took out Morgan Gibbs White. Mm. I put in Alanga. Mm. And decided I would play Alanga over Munez. Mm, uh, what? So Gibbs White was on the bench. Yeah. So I moved. I did a lot of movement around, but mm. eventually. So, uh, so basically, what then happened? Sounds like you made multiple last-minute moves. In the last five to ten minutes before the deadline, I moved everything around, which resulted in my best point scorer being Reguilón with minus three. Like <laughs> the only one that returned anything was Reguilón. <laughs> Does that count as return? No, of course it doesn't. <laughs> yeah, I, you had you had, I had zero a returns from your. I had your... no returns. I mean, you... regular, it's just a disaster. As the whole thing. Moon is a disaster. first bench. Sufal second bench with seven. Uh, Taylor and and Kaminsky. Um, yeah. As I mean, your that... as your good lady said to me on Instagram, I'd have just been better off to keep a stooping yam. Yeah. <laughs> oh dear. Well. I mean, I had a great week. I don't know what the fuss is about. 24 points for me. I had one return and that was from a Burnley defender. Boom. <laughs> Didn't play Regulon. <laughs> Loved it. Great week. 50k green arrow. Oh, Absolutely taking it. Ass. Yeah. I mean, that is bad. Um, we should probably take some questions, Sam. Yeah, let's stop talking about my team. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah. Let's talk about other people's teams. <laughs> Tommy, we haven't got any questions. So if you could all drop us some what questions... Uh, that would be that'd be great. There's no questions. There's Surely enough. Delia and Yelena have got some questions. There are zero questions for us to take. Oh, we've got one. Sting in the tail. Keep and play Foden and Watkins or keep or get Mooney's and Salah for a hit. I love that question because if I don't wildcard this week, I'm debating Watkins and Foden out for Mooney's and Salah for a hit. So I would love to know your opinion on that move. Okay. Uh, this is hard but Sam from last week when you were giving me one word answers you're now giving me bloody like silence ess essay no essays <laughs> right here we go as she undoes the scroll of <laughs> I'm in such a weird mood today I don't know what's the matter with me I apologise everyone who's watching this um what do I think about this? So I think Salah and Muniz do really well this week. Both have got really nice fixtures. Sorry, yep. I know that they're playing against Brighton, but I, it's a nice fixture for oh, Salah. No, fair. It's a great fixture for Muniz against um, Sheffield United. So that's great. I also do really like the fixture for Watkins though this week. Like I'm thinking about holding him for one more week. On, mm. I'm wildcarding, but I'm mm. thinking about keeping him one more week just to have him for this game against Wolves and then moving him to somebody else the week after. The, the selling Foden this week, I don't mind because presumably you would be able to bring him back at some point later on if you so chose. Um, and it just is one less person to be bothered about during that game again between Arsenal and Man City, which feels horrendous. Mm. So I probably would do this, but I wouldn't want to lose Ollie Watkins this week. It's one of those moves that like looks decent on paper, but Watkins and Foden are both absolutely incredible players. And, and even though... Bang. Exactly. So it comes with, a, I think, especially for a hit as well. Like it's it, you've got a you've got Foden and Watkins who you both need to not not do anything and with yeah. the form they've got is that likely? You've got a Fulham striker who okay has been absolutely incredible but it's still a Fulham striker. He's not yet in the same bracket as the other three in terms of that kind of consistency. And then you're relying on Salah to do something big. I think if you're going to captain Salah, I yes. might. Yeah, I think I'm. St I'd still I'm still favouring Son. I think against Luton. So. I'm leaning I towards. I'm, going. I'm leaning towards. You're going. You're going full on Salah. He's been in no, for a while. No, no, no. So I'm gonna go. No, I mean I wouldn't captain Sun because I'm gonna be there. And whenever we, I've gone to Spurs this season, we've lost. 
<laughs> you're very full of like um oh the the infographics are always right if i go to you're very um superstitious today today i feel like i'm yeah. like i don't know yeah I, I i i think salah is the best captain this week mm. against the mighty brighton we step it up against uh he he got two goals against us earlier in the season but he was not in that game whatsoever One yeah but you're not penalty. in the game and he still gets two goals yeah, I know. We imagine what we could do when he is in the game. Correct. To be fair, yeah. No, he, he is a good option. I don't hate the move. I think it's. I think it's a coin flip. I. I, I wouldn't back Mooney's and Salah definitely getting more than four points over Foden and Watkins this week. I guess the other thing here is when's the wild card coming? Because if you're taking a hit this week for this, but then you're mm. going to wild card next week anyway, then I probably would be less inclined well, let's, let's, to do let's it. Take a, let's take a quick look at, at wild card teams because we, we we put a couple. Oh hello, this is mine. Yes, this is yours. Uh, Ariola and Raya. Uh, well, Doggy. Oh, okay. Can I? Can I just? Can I just explain some of this? Is that all right? Yeah, do you want me to, I was, was going to read out the team and then you can. Right. Yeah, all right, then go on then. For podcast. Uh, Ariola Rea, <laughs> Adoggy Gusto, Sabani, Saliba, Lascelles, Palmer, Salasson, Saka, Gordon, Muniz, Harland, Watkins. So, Ariola, to, to be clear, is just there as a placeholder until we get some fixtures because he's not going to double. I'll get someone who's going to double in 37 when I want to play my bench boost in that place. But he's just sat there for now because I don't see the point in... Hello? We're moving yeah. screens. No, sorry. There's, there's, a, reason. there's a reason. Oh, yeah. here you go, Harry. Oh, look at you. All the tech on the go. Okay. Um, <laughs> when the doubles get announced, hopefully soon, um, then I'll swap the, Ray the Areola pick at that point. But for now, I just left him there. Uh, the others, Udogi and Son, are there temporarily for this game against Luton, and eventually mm. they'll become Foden and probably a City defender. But again, all of this is very much based upon when we see some doubles, because the plan is not to hold Watkins for much longer than just for this week either. Yep. But again, it's just he's just there still because I do like the fixture this week. So a couple of transfers with it, and it feels like it might be all right. Because I mean, my, my team at the moment has Harlan, Watkins, Palmer, Son. Saka, Gabriel instead of Saliba. Um, so six of that, probably six of the eleven. It yeah. my, my team, my, my defense is the is the is the concern. This was the wild team, not um, wild team. This is the wild card team that I put together. Wow. Oh wow! Uh, so quite different to yours. Um, two Chelsea. Yeah, because they've got they've got two doubles, haven't they? We think. Well, well at least one double and potentially another double as well. Uh, Neto in goal, Disassi, Castagna, Gusto, Son, Saka, Palmer, Salah. Harlan, Darwin, Solanke. I mean, a lot of them is is, is quite similar. I mean, I noticed yours didn't have Solanke. Are you, you're keeping Watkins over Solanke. I find that interesting. Because they, they're yeah. more than likely going to have the double in 34. Mm-hmm. I don't want him. You saw what he did in the double last time. <laughs> Mr. Penalty. So it irritated me. Um, I probably... my my. I think I'm going to have... Well, so I'm going to have Watkins for this week. I could then... Ugh, I don't really think I want to go back to Solanke again. I'm, I'm quite happy that I don't have him. I want to go to Darwin from... Watkins, that's the plan. I don't I don't think I'll bother with too much. Depends yeah. on what that rest of that double looks like and if there's anyone else doubling, I suppose, as to what I do. But no, I just don't think I'll have Slanky. That's why I've kept Zabani, because he can sit mm. on the bench otherwise. But I'll have him for the double. But I don't think I'm going to bother with Slanky. Yep, fair enough. Um, and just a shout out to Scout, because they've got a very useful Look thing here. You with all the fancy I know, I've got today. all the graphics today. Yeah, guaranteed two double game weeks. That's right. Chelsea have two guaranteed double game weeks, which is why... There's investment in them. They're absolutely useless, but <laughs> they do have two double game weeks coming up. They do. Um, this is all, all done by Neil, I believe, who's, who's amazing. Follow a Scout legend. for all this. Uh, guaranteed one double game week and may get another, a Brighton and Spurs. So again, good good to keep your Spurs assets. Brighton, uh, I think that with the fixtures the way they are, probably probably a team to avoid. Uh, the teams that are guaranteed at least one, uh, guaranteed one double game week are Arsenal, Bournemouth, Palace, Everton, Liverpool, Man City, Man United, Newcastle, Sheffield United and Wolves. Um, I believe it's Arsenal, Bournemouth, maybe Liverpool, Sheffield United, who they're saying are potentially going to be in the 34 double, but obviously we haven't got any confirmation of that yet. Um, and your teams you want to be kind of getting off um, at the moment are Villa, Brentford, Burnley, Fulham, Luton, Forest, West Ham, because they haven't got another double game week uh, coming. So if you're planning on wildcarding, you want to be filling up your player, your team with teams with at least one double game week coming up although Fulham have got a really nice run of fixtures till the end of the season so well that's why Manis is nice because yeah. he's, eight, he's the eighth anyway so you can just use him when you need him yep. and you don't bench him when you don't it's not like us to like get overexcited about double game weeks and ignore players with good single game weeks is it who would do that I mean I bought him in 
<laughs> We've got loads of questions now, Sam. Loads of questions. You see, you. Yeah, I think you were worrying about nothing. Thank People just all. wanted to, me to get out of my ranty, weird mood, didn't they? That's all. <laughs> they were like, let's wait for Sam to calm down and then we'll ask the questions. Absolutely. We're going to take three quick fire ones because there's three good uh, quick fire Are they questions all from here. Harry? Uh, nope. Harry, ask us a question. He doesn't need us. He's much better. He's, He's much better, better than us. He's yeah. manager than us. Uh, <laughs> Asim Khan, best game week 30, captaincy, Son Salah Palmer uh, or Darwin. <laughs> Darwin is probably a bit of a stretch. <laughs> I'm, I think I'm on Salah. I'm on Son, so... But I also think Palmer is a really good captain, I would just say. Mm. Home to Burnley, he's definitely getting something in that. I think they're yeah. all going to get something, aren't they? They'll it's all get be... something. It's yeah. just who gets more. Yeah, agreed. John B, would you replace Foden with Bruno Fernandes? Who, who have Man United got this week? Brentford away. Mm, that's quite nice this week. And they will double. No. No, I wouldn't. I think City have got Luton home soon, haven't they? Yeah. As well. Good fixture. I just think, all right, it's one bad fixture for Man City, but then after that, mm. you'd want Foden, wouldn't you? I like this question from Basler FPL because it's the people who have got these players on, you know, not on free hits. They've actually transferred in players like Gibbs mm-hmm. Wyatt, Tony. They've got decisions to make this week because they've got to, all the players that let us down. Uh, you you got to you got to play. I must admit, I was so happy when I opened my app and Reguilón didn't appear anymore. I was like, thank Reggie, God for that. Off imagine, you be, go. imagine, imagine being stuck with him. To be fair, Gibbs White did all right. Uh, would you play Tony or Gibbs White this week? Um, so Tony's got Man United. Gib- I play Gibbs White. Is it Brentford v Forest? No, who have, have Forest got? Forest are, are home to Palace, mm. and Brentford are home to United. I'd play. Oof. Oh, that is tough. That is tough. Tony has been awful for ages, but so bad. I think I. Pr- but Gibbs White hasn't been great apart from one assist. I think I'd play Tony. Would you? Yeah, I don't think there's much in it though. I'll play Gibbs White. Okay. Nick Giordano says, "Do Virgil Van Dijk and Huang? Huang? What's he still doing in your team?" Amazing. It's like me early in the season when you were looking at my team and being like, why have you still got Rhys James? It's been like nine weeks. It's been nine years and you still had Rhys James. Virgil and Huang to Gusto and Salah or a doggy and Huang to Gusto and Salah. So it's basically, would you sell Van Dijk or a doggy uh, for uh, uh, for Gusto, essentially? Uh, we'll take a hit either way as we walk into Darwin in game week 31. Also, would you buy Salah this week? Oh yeah, because the second Salo move is for game week thirty-one, because I you'd wouldn't... keep Udogi because you because of Luton. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't think I'd be get. I, I wouldn't want to get rid of Van Dijk with the fixtures Liverpool have got and the double. So I think you. It's a nice differential as well. Yeah, I think and I wait. think Udogi you could afford to sell after the Luton game. If you sell Van Dijk this week, next week's going to come round, and you're going to want to sell a doggy and have Van Dijk back. So yeah, so either you sell your doggy this week. And just get Gusto in now and and accept that Spurs probably don't keep a clean sheet, by the yeah. way. Yeah, you could just do it this week. So you could just do the you doggy out thing this week and accept if Spurs do get a clean sheet, then he gets a clean sheet and that's what it is. But probably they don't because we don't But you're getting Gusto in ahead of Burnley at home. But you're getting Gusto in for I'd Burnley. Do it. I'd do so it I think week. I'd just do that move. Yeah. I'd hold Virgil and I'd just sell you doggy this week. I agree. Uh, James C, bounty or double decker? Oh my god, a bounty all day long. Oh god, no. That's they not... are my favourite. Bounties. Oh, I love a bounty. Do you not like a bounty? I don't really like coconut like flavoured stuff. Ooh, it's I just... love coconut. Um I do like a double decker as well, mm. but bounties, if you want to win my heart, bring me a bounty. Bounties are like lowest tier chocolate. Oh <gasps> Yeah. I've said it. Yeah. You know you know like they get them in the uh, in the is it the celebrations or Are the Are you suggesting that I'm kind of cheap then that I that I have my yeah. heart one by a bounty. Yeah. <laughs> you dress up with your nice hair, but deep down you're a I'm a chav, is that what dwelling, you're saying? Yeah, a chubby <laughs> bounty eater. <laughs> uh, Jay- when uh, the celebrations come out, the first one I eat is the bounty. Oh, they're the ones that always get left to the end of the box. What? We could live together. We could coexist quite happily together, you and me. Why why are you going to be eating a bounty when you could have Maltesers? Oh, no, I'd pick a bounty all day. The first one I pick out the box is the bounty. What's your view on a Mars bar? What? what, what? What's What's my view view on a Mars bar? You know what? I love a Mars bar. Oh, no. No. I don't like a Mars bar. They're too sweet. I actually think they're underrated. I know they're massively highly rated, but also I don't think anyone really... You don't really see many people just eating a Mars bar these days. (laughs) 
do you? Like everyone goes for like the bit out there, double deckers, all the twirls are very popular. I see. What's your favourite chocolate bar? I do like an orange twirl, actually. Yeah, I like I, an orange twirl. Chocolate I orange is delicious. Yeah. Yeah. The, the best, the best, uh, the best chocolate bar ever made was the orange Kit Kat chunky. Yes, which, I'll agree which on that. Lost to peanut butter. No, and, and I hate they, peanut butter. I know, so do I. And now it's they claggy. do peanut butter. It's awful. Why is pe- peanut butter is loved by my household, and I hate it. It's awful. Disgusting. Awful. Uh, Jamie Hayes says, "Genuinely, the worst take Az has ever given." Oof. I, I've had a lot of bad takes, mate. <laughs> that, I don't think that's even up there. That's probably not even the top ten. What, what was the worst bit when he said he doesn't like a bounty, or when he said oh, I was a I chav? Think it's the bounty. <laughs> <laughs> let's, go, let's go with the uh, the bounty, uh, the bounty one. Uh, Yell says, "If you live with Az, there'll be no celebrations left. He eats everything <laughs> so quickly." Mm, that's fair. Do you want to come live with me, Yells? It's nice over here. <laughs> a donut fiasco this weekend, mini AK. Yeah, to be fair. Uh, no, Wait, I did no, let's stop. Come on, tell the story about the donut because yeah, donuts to, are my favourite. Have you ever been to Donut Time? So do- yes, and I yeah. love Donut Time. Donut Time is one of my favourite places. I love a donut. Lee doesn't like donuts, so we're not often allowed oh, to I go love to it. Donut Time, but I love Donut Time. It makes me happy. The kids love it too. Well, she she bought a, a donut from Donut Time. Yeah. Um, and did you eat it? Well, I, I missed the message where she said, we'll split it tomorrow. So I woke up and was like, oh, I'm having that. That's my donut. So I ate the whole thing. I'd have divorced you in a, in a, immediately. <laughs> I also I also bought a pack of six mini egg es- nest cakes. You didn't eat all of them. I just ate, ate them all. Yeah, yeah, good. I hope you've bought her something better, good to replace these things. <laughs> I bought some laundry detergent today. <laughs> Coconut smell. So I'm so disappointed in you. Yeah, Heather says bouncy, sick face. Well, she, she's in your camp and you, you're the one that eats things that you're not supposed to. <laughs> Outrageous. Uh, Jammer says, will you be happy with Munez with Jimenez back? Any update on Munez's yeah, not? Yeah, because the thing is with Jimenez back, like I don't think Munez is going to get dropped. Like He's been so, so good. And Jimenez wasn't exactly on fire before, before he got injured again. And I think in reality with a 4.5 forward or 4.6 now, a 4.6 forward, he is going to be on my bench more times than I'm going to play him because the rest of the front A are, as mm. you saw in that graphic before. So I think he's going to get minutes in every game and in the fixtures that he's got, he could easily return. And as long as he plays in the week that I play my bench boost, that's all I'm really worried about. I think him and his, his, he's had a, like a decent-ish season for Fulham, but he's been a bit in and out of the team. He's had some injuries. He's yeah. not the same player that he was at, at Wolves. They've got this this player yeah. now in Munez who is like everything. They, I mean, quality. his ability to poach goals and the quality he has. There's an absolutely no way he's getting dropped for no. for Jimenez or, or Broya. He scored like six goals in seven games. Like what more? Like what more do you want? He's going to help mm. them fly up the table. Fixtures they've got. I think Fulham are going to have a really really strong end uh, to the season. Not worried about yeah. it at all. No, good pick. Me good pick. Uh, Carlos Bambos already got in Salah very nice would you take in a minus four to bring in Darwin for Tony yeah yeah I would because I just don't think that Tony's that great a pick moving forward and I think Darwin is a long term great option Mm. so I would I would as well I think as long as he's fit Mm. I do think Tony could get something about against United though yeah, but I think well, I do it for a get hit. more against Brighton. Ah, we're great. We're a great side. And then long, I, but longer term, you'd much, much rather have Darwin over Yeah, Tony. but you're already a bit ahead of the curve by being able to get Salah without a hit. So you could just get Darwin next week against Sheffield United. I'd wait. I'd wait. I wouldn't. I'm not patient enough. I'd get him now. <laughs> you're definitely on one. Uh, today. <laughs> Uh, Indy Barge says view on game week 30 wildcard well and Prima HW as well both asking the same question side by side you've done it so you clearly a fan um, I wasn't planning to do it mm. so my plan was 34 that was the plan wildcard in, either into 34 or into 33 ready for 34 and I'll be honest game week 29 was such a, <laughs> a, d- a disaster live on, on Scout Channel a disaster. A disaster, very nice. Uh, that I sat, not only was that a disaster, obviously all that stuff that I talked about at the beginning of this stream, plus the regular red card, which sent me over the edge. Plus then I sit down to watch Spurs and I think things can only get better. Yeah. My three Spurs players, they can only get better. No, no. Not only did they get worse, they just ended up in the bin. The whole, the whole day was in the bin. 
because my mood just went, Psh, mm. as you can imagine. And so for me, I looked at my team that I'd, and I'd written a like loads of drafts of like wildcard teams and I'd done on Plan FPL for game week 34. And then I thought, let's just look at what one looks like now. And there was one or two players different. And I thought, why am I waiting three weeks then? I'm going to take a hit for Salah. What's the point? I might as well just get him now on wildcard and be done. Well, that, that is that is the absolute key thing for me, it's is the, that there's not there's many not weeks left of the season uh, to go. Yeah. I mean, look at your wildcard team there. Which players are going to be different? I mean, I know you've just answered that. I'm just I'm reinforcing the point that if you, if you wildcard in 30, 31, 32, then it's all going to look the same. Maybe if you wildcard in like 35, because there's going to be new game, double games yeah. in 37, it might look but a we'll bit better. we'll know that. If you're we'll playing, know that in advance. Yeah. And you've got your transfers to work that out. That was my thinking is that now I've got all these free transfers for game week 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36 and 37. I've got mm. seven transfers to f- get to the perfect bench boost. And I already yeah. feel like I'm halfway there, particularly if the fixtures get announced before the 30 deadline, then I'm going to be well, two thirds of the I think if, you, if you've got your free hit left as well, you're going to be using that probably in 37. Laughing, yeah. You wildcard now. You wildcard now. You set yourself up for 34 bench boost. And then yeah. free hitting 37 to maximise the doubles. I think it's such an easy, easy yeah. strategy. I um, like it. I like the free hit now. I, d- I don't even see the point of waiting one more week. That's why I did it. Yeah, no, I agree. I think I think it's a very good time uh, to work. Well. I, I think this week, this week or, next. or next week. I think, you, you doing know, it? You... Oh, I don't know. My, I, I'm just, I'm just, I, I look at my team. My defence is a joke. I've got Trippier, Kerkes, Doty, Kabore. <laughs> And, and Gabriel, right? That's that is a joke. But my front seven: Son, Saka, Foden, Palmer, Haaland, Watkins, Solanke. That doesn't need touching. That like that I could I could. Ease. I know I haven't got Salah, but that is a pretty decent front seven with Son captain. Yeah. So do I wild card this week just to sort my defence out? I probably still will. I, I do you know what? I think it depends on Trippier. If Trippier is out, I think I have to wild card because I've got no defenders left. But if he's fit. I might just do uh, Kirkes to a one-week punt, maybe a, a Fulham defender, and then wildcard okay, in, in 31. Yeah, and then wildcard in 31. Yeah. Um, potentially. I don't really know. It's, it's all a bit It's all a bit up in up in the air. Uh, Fair enough. Paolo Suarez says, would you go Son or Richarlison on a wildcard? Is Son locked in, the wildcard? I'm not locked in on him. He's in there because he's the most expensive of the Spurs assets, so I wanted mm. to budget for him. I'm not. I'm not wed to it being son, and I'm not planning to keep him long term. So it's basically, he, it's yeah. So poor son. I know. What's he done to you? Absolutely nothing. The, he's the captain of my club. He, the man, is a legend. I love him dearly. He's the nicest man in football. But the Spurs fixtures massively shift soon, mm. and he's a lot of money, and that money could be spent differently on like the likes of Foden or whoever it is that... Again, it's good. we're going to have to wait and see when these doubles land, aren't we? But for me, it is a Son, Richarlison, Madison conversation because I'd add Madison to the mix here as well. Like, I'm mm. not sure which one of the three I'm going to go with. Um, I think probably because I'm not planning to keep long term, I probably will go with Son this time around. But obviously it's going to depend on how people get back from international duty. Some played yesterday, got through that game fine, scored a goal. Lovely. Madison's away on international duty as well at the moment with England. Doesn't play till tomorrow. Um, Richarlison, you know, he could be mm. a great option as well. We've got to see on, on his fitness levels. Obviously, he's coming back from injury. So He's I'm a lot a of money, torn. Son. He's a lot of money, he's Son. He's a lot he, of money. And midfielder spots from 31 are... I mean, you could, you know, Arsenal have got Luton at home, for example. So you could wildcard in 31, keep Son for the Luton game in 30, wildcard in 31, take a punt on an Odegaard or a Havertz for that one week. And then in game week uh, 33, City have got Luton at home. So you could yeah. you can play around with that spot a little bit. Go for Saar, move him to an mm-hmm. Arsenal mid, then move him Agreed. to a, a City mid yeah. as well. So, so I think that's I mean, one of the advantages of waiting maybe on the wildcard is you keep Son and then, then move Yeah. Him. So I didn't have any Spurs players before mm. my West part of the reason oh for wildcard. What is happening in the world? I know, right? Didn't have a Spurs attacker. Well, that's, that's a bit of a lie. I had Van Der Ven. But I didn't have a Spurs attacker. And I was like, I can't not have a Spurs attacker. I'm going there to watch them play against Luton. I've got to have, I've got to have a Spurs attacker for that game. I, and I originally, my first uh, wildcard draft had Richarlison. My second one had Madison. And my third one, I thought, no, let's just get Sun. Because actually, mm. at that point, you've got the most expensive of the assets. So you can... 
you can make sure that you you know you can afford anybody so we'll see how how everyone travels back from international duty and make a decision then but i think like you said there are so many great options for that midfielder start that i'm unlikely to hold a spurs midfielder beyond probably sell him next week to be honest i'll probably come out of it and sell him for probably foden Mm. so that i've got him set up in ready for the coming weeks and then that leaves some money in the bank whereas obviously if you go for a Richarlison or a Madison you just have to consider price points that's all mm. uh, Evan Chowdhury says a comment which I saw Andy Let's Talk post earlier which was Gary 30 is the last week to have Salah yep. uh, differential captain yeah his ownership's going to be low isn't he he's got up in price but he's but not he's, significantly he's no, just he's, one. he's probably only going to be about 25-30% EO I'd mm-hmm. say which is definitely yeah the lowest he he's probably has ever has ever been yeah yeah, I just, I just like, I just Luton at the moment. The amount of the goals they're conceding. I just really the Salah. I can't captain anyone else. The Salah pick. I mean, I always have a rule as well that I go to Spurs. I captain somebody I'm going to watch, but I can't get Salah out of my head. Mm. I think he's the best captain. There's a song there. I, I know. I reckon. Uh, Doctor David says, "Who are the best defender picks for the run-in?" Well, again, let's come over to your card, see who you've gone with. Uh, Doggy Chelsea. Gusto, Zabani, Saliba, Lascelles. Chelsea and Arsenal, I think, are up there. Lascelles, the fixtures are great. Like, they'd sit right up the top of the fixture ticker. And with the Botman injury, I kind of think, well, surely that locks Lascelles back in again. And at 3.9, perfect, right? So, Udogi, I've got just for this game against Luton. And then I'm probably, it could be a double up on the Chelsea defence, like in that draft that you created. It could be, um, I've already got double up with Arsenal with having Raya. Mm. So, I can't go for another Arsenal defender. But that's the other option is to go with like a Ben White in the Udogi spot and then have somebody different in goal. Um, like, and again, it's going to depend a little bit on your chip strategy, isn't it? With the sort of fourth and the fifth defenders, because it's when you cho- choose to play that bench boost chip that you would want them to have. <laughs> You'd well, want not them for me. To have... I haven't got it. Well, oh yeah. Well, I want them to have a double. <laughs> uh, the other thing is the other pick. I, I so Connor Bradley's not there at the moment. Um, I want a bit more word on Trent, but because I do really like the Bradley pick. If Trent's going to be out for a little bit yeah. longer still, then I really like the Bradley pick and I'll probably go for him because it's it's a bit of a struggle. So Virgil van Dijk is definitely an option, mm. um, but he's just that little bit more expensive and I wanted to stay relatively cheap at the back to allow this creation that is up top. <laughs> uh, Evan says the cells nailed. They can play Burn centre-back and Livramento left-back. They or, can. But they but don't. When, <laughs> but they don't. No. And when he was when they were injured before, they played Lascelles and Lascelles was un, really unlucky to lose his bot. Mm. Like, I, I, Lascelles, I think, will play. And to be honest, in the fifth, it's either him or Charlie Taylor in that fifth defender slot. And the fixtures for Newcastle are way, way better than the fixtures for Burnley. And Burnley don't double and Newcastle do double. So, yeah. yes, they can play Burn centre-back and Livermento, but they won't. They'll Has Burn ever played centre-back under Howe? I feel like he don't... constantly used at left-back unless like in an emergency. It, I think it would have to be an emergency. Like yeah. He always plays the cells there. And I don't know why you wouldn't play the mm. cells there when you've got him there. You yeah. make shift with the other two, whereas... That's his spot. If yeah, Harry says the only thing is Burn getting cooked every week. Yeah, he's been getting cooked every week yeah, the but... entire season. So it hasn't been dropped. But also, does it matter? Like, you're not going to necessarily start him every week. So, it's fine. I think 3.9. Like, it'd be more 3. likely. 9. If Burn gets dropped, it would just be Livermento coming in at left back. And Which the... is way better for Lascelles anyway. Lascelles did all right, didn't he, when he was, yeah. when he was playing at centre back over the season. So, yeah. Yeah, I think yeah, it's they, fine. They actually did keep some clean sheets there. Here's one for you. Uh, James C., who's the best successor for Klopp? That's an easy one, isn't it? As. Me? Mm. <laughs> I could do a job there. Alonso. It's got, it has to be, isn't it? Yeah. He's about to win the Bundesliga with Leverkusen. He knows the history of the club. You can be the back. You can be his uh, deputy. His assistant. <laughs> mm-hmm. I have absolutely zero ties to Liverpool whatsoever, but if they want me there. You know. I imagine, imagine if they, if they want me you, there, then I'm, I'm can there. You have an assist Alonso in managing Liverpool. Well, there's that kid, like, isn't there? That like that thirty-year-old, thirty-year-old kid. He's not, not really a kid. He's a thirty-year-old, and he's he's been given a job because he played a lot of football manager. See that story? No. Yeah. He like he set a set his CV on and he was like top football manager and so they offered him a job and he did really well. Amazing. I might have embellished some of that story. But there's there's some truth to it. Look it up. I will do when I guy who here. got a managerial job through football manager. I'm not completely <laughs> uh, not completely making. Yeah, that. it'll be Alonso, surely. 
Yeah, it's got to be. I think, I think it has to be. Uh, Evan Chowdhury again says, go for Van Heck. It's a little cells. Two double game weeks, according to predictions. To be fair, we are about as bad defensively as Newcastle are. Uh, he's not an awful pick, Van Heck. He's not a brilliant pick either, though, is he? No, but he's the, more expensive than the cells, though, isn't he? Yeah. I think I'd rather have Dubravka than the cells, though. Because I think Pope's out for another few months. Already. End of the month. End of April. I already had a setback. Yeah, end of April now. It was the beginning of April. It's now oh, the end okay. of April. Okay. Yeah, I think cool. it's like the 30th of April is due back in. Okay, was the 6th. Believe me, I've been checking because I need somebody to be my second goalkeeper for game week 37. So uh, I've been keeping an eye on Dubravka because that was my original plan. <laughs> Sounds very made up that a 38-year-old kid gets a job because he was good at football manager. <laughs> yeah. It does, it does doesn't, doesn't it? it? I'm not, I'm not going to lie. Guy gets job. Are you Googling it now? Yeah. Yeah, first thing that comes up. From Will Still. Google Will Still. From beating PSG in a computer game to holding them to a draw in real life. Yeah, he's in the French league. That's it. Where? Yeah, I didn't. I didn't make this up. Which club is he at? Uh, I don't know if he's still there. If he's surprised if he was. He what? He was at Rennes. Rennes in France. And he's still there. Or not. Will still has his name, David. Thank you very much. See, I'm not talking complete rubbish. This is unbelievable. <laughs> I told you. Will still. 30-year-old <laughs> kid as well. I'm, I stand by that um, as well. Steve Hawkins, people know about it. Sean Hall was that, that manager still in France. Was that a football manager? There you go. See, I'm not talking I'm not talking complete rubbish. A uh, question from Lalek Sam. Ben, Tony or Bowen? Sorry, I'm, on, I'm Googling Will still now. Um, I told you. I told you. Bench bum, um West Ham have got... Who have West Ham got? They've got Newcastle away. So he'd be up against Dan Byrne. <laughs> I bench... Mm, I think I'd still... Mm, I think I'd still bench Tony. I'd play Bowen. I just don't trust Tony at the minute. Yeah, I'd, I'd bench Bowen. Um, I, God, I can't even speak today. Come on. I wouldn't do that. I would bench Tony. I would Tony. play Bowen. Because I think... Up against Newcastle, you play, you play your defense, you play your attackers. Uh, I would definitely do that. Uh, oh yeah, Dave M. Club got fined every week. He didn't have his coaching badges. That's the bit I forgot to say. Yeah, because he didn't have the right license. He kept getting fined, but he kept winning. So they um they kept him on. Uh, Is he he's still the head coach there? Is he still there? Yeah. Amazing. What a story? So there's hope for all of us. There's hope for all of us yet. Yeah. Uh, Took over I in. This is madness. Why did I not know this story? I don't know. In fact, I did know the story about the manager that kept getting fined. Yeah. I did know that. See, you all thought I was lying. But... Head coach, this is mental. <laughs> I need to pay more attention to what's going on in the French you do. league, clearly. Clearly, clearly you do. Uh, let's take one more question. And that is going to come from... Uh, Paolo Diego Romario. Best fourth and fifth mid... For the next five game weeks well on budget palmer's going to be the fourth if you do it on price points because you're going to have salah saka and son probably yeah so that makes palmer the fourth and i think the fifth one is more contentious and again this is going to depend on where the doubles sit but gordon i think is a good option i mm -hmm. think garnacho is a good option as well um if you want somebody even cheaper still um you've got players like Declan Rice. Declan Rice? Fuck yeah. yeah. I wasn't expecting that. We're cheap. Cheap and, and nice fixtures and, you know, potential option there. Um, I still quite like the Rodri pick as well in the fifth midfielder spot. I think he, it's a cheap way into more city. Um, Anthony Gordon has blanked in one home fixture all season. I know, that's why he's there. And he plays three home fixtures in his next four games. Mm-hmm. That's why I've got him there. So I like him. I like Garnacho as well. I've had Garnacho for ages. I've managed to bench his two halls and play him in the others. Of course, it's just been my season. Standard, yeah. But he looks right. a good option. Very cheap. And I also like Eze as well. The Palace. Eze? Yeah, it's quite yeah. a good run. Um, like, for example, yeah. you could wildcard this week. You could bench Saka for Eze because Eze's got Forest. You're so going to wildcard this week. <laughs> <laughs> Con Bogler says, uh, says Eze as well. Yeah, I like Eze. I like Gordon. I like Garnacho. And then I think Palmer, Salah, Sonsaka picks itself if you're wildcarding uh, this week. If you're wildcarding next week, then I think that Son spot is a little bit tricky because you could go for Diaz, for example, like a Liverpool. Yeah, yeah. I know, agree. Target that, that, uh, that so, game. As soon as the Luton game's done, I yeah, think exactly. you could lose Son. Yeah, 
And Kieran White says, anyone looking at Havertz? Definitely. I'd love to bring Havertz in. Would Absolutely you? love it. Yeah. It's one of, honestly, I might wait a week because I could bring in Havertz at home to Luton. I'd love to. Havertz, I'd love to sorry. give him. I'd love to give him that. That'd be so fun. So fun. Uh, if you beat me this season based on <laughs> Havertz. <of> Havertz. <laughs> That's what the people want, Sam. What for you to beat me? Well, yeah. The people with, want bounty bars. We've, specifically that's with Havertz. Very clear. <laughs> Lovely people stuff. like a bounty. The people, well, they don't. No one likes a bounty. They do. Uh, awesome. That's it. That's it for I us. I want one now. Go get one. You've probably, got, shout some, to Lee. You've got, probably got about 20 oh, boxes of celebrations in the house with like just loads of bounties because no one else wants them. That's not true because if there's a box of celebrations in the house, I eat all the bounties. Ah, okay. I, I, but, but in like half an hour, I've got to go and pick up the kids. They're at cinema night at the minute, so I've got to go and pick them up. And there's a little shop right near their school that does oh, sell like, yeah, but it's, it sells the large ones. You know, that I've got like two bounty mm. bars in together. King they size. always make me happy. Yeah. Mm. Mm. That's like really. Mars bars. That surprised me. I find them too sweet. Right. There's too much. There's too much sweetness in there with the caramel, and oh, it's just too much. It makes my nose feel funny. <laughs> <laughs> I like a Mars bar. I, I stand by. It. I'm underrated. I went for a phase where I was eating like a Mars bar a day. No, you weren't. Yeah, and I've had to like. Especially not got back. diabetes. I know. I had to cut back because because it was. It, they're quite. They are very sweet. They're quite a lot. Mm. Um, but... when, I like a Kit Kat and when we were on holiday we bought home some birthday cake flavour Kit Kats oh yeah but they're very sweet like they mm. make my teeth a bit like ooh. have you been to Japan? no they um, I mean I've never been to Japan but I had yeah, somebody we... who, I had somebody who went to Japan and came back and they bought like the 20 Kit Kats. different flavours of Kit Kats yeah, yeah. They love some them of them were there. really yeah some of them were like really weird they were like I don't know we um, had a we had plans of going. Flavor. Yeah, we had plans of going to Japan this summer for because it's a big birthday for a certain member of this household mm. this year. And uh, but we all zero. Don't tell him. Not for me. Let's be not clear. For you. No, not not for me. You. Not yet. <laughs> I'm not yet. Uh, but yeah, certain certain member of this household, <clears throat> Mr. Bonfield, is a uh, is getting old this year. So we were planning to go out there this summer, but oh my gosh, it's so expensive. Mm. So I think it's on delay for a couple of years mm. while we try and save for it. Well, when you do, well, you just got back from Disneyland, so you know. Yeah, but Dad paid for that. I'll get the violins out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we could have afforded that. Blimey, how much did I get paid? <laughs> Goodness. Amazing stuff. Right, let's call it there. We will be back again next week to talk a bit more about your wild cards. See which on last Thursday. Minute. On Thursday, yes. Uh, obviously, it's Easter over the weekend, so I'll be back in Essex. You'll be doing kid-related stuff. Egg hunts. Egg hunts and things like that. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, so we'll see you then. But yeah, thanks everyone for uh, joining us. Make sure you like the stream. Give us a comment as well. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Check out Fantasy Football Scout to help you with all your planning ahead of Gaming 30. And Sam and I will see you next week. Bye, everybody.